Uh, yesterday, a group of uh, Christians were able to go to the Gay Pride March uh, in London. It's an annual event where homosexuals and lesbians come together to celebrate their sexuality. Uh, nobody quite understands why they feel the need to do this. Uh, we don't have uh, adulterers or fornicators or even a heterosexual uh, march, but uh, homosexuals feel the need to do this, and uh, unfortunately it is funded uh, by taxpayers' money. But uh, what was good was that uh, a group of Christians went down there and preached the gospel, and uh, the police gave them protection, because they will need protection, I'm afraid to say. And uh, we are still fortunately blessed in 2009 to uh, preach against uh, areas of sin, which the Bible is very clear on. Uh, one of the problems with uh, liberal theology today is that uh, most people who teach that uh, homosexuality, uh, lesbianism, and uh, premarital sex in general uh, are okay are the sort of people that read their Bible uh, out of context and normally selected passages. And uh, we call that asegesis. Uh, the, correct way, the correct way to read the Bible is exegesis, uh, where you read the text properly in its context. Uh, somebody once said a verse without a context is a pretext. Uh, the Bible is very clear uh, about homosexuality, and the word gay is a French word for happy. So we don't use the word gay at this ministry, and if you are a Bible-believing Christian, you shouldn't be using the word gay either. The word is homosexual or sodomy. Uh, in the Bible, uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 19, uh, we have an account of the angels coming uh, to see Lot. Uh, the sin has reached up to heaven, and the Lord has said, uh, destroy it. Wicked town, wicked people. And Genesis 19, 1 to 29, uh, the angels blind uh, the local sodomites because they are trying to uh, force intercourse on Lot and the angels. And uh, subsequently, the whole of the town is destroyed, and only Lot and his two daughters escape. Uh, also, a quick footnote, uh, if you read the text of Genesis carefully, you will see that uh, Lot's uh, daughters got him drunk. They got him drunk because he wasn't that depraved uh, enough to have sex with his own daughters. A lot of people make fun of this account, and they say, look at Lot, a wicked man having uh, sex with his daughters. Well, no, get your facts right. They got him drunk to have sex with him. Why? because they thought they were the only people left on the earth and they thought they'd have to repopulate the earth all over again also it is uh, in some ways understandable that the daughters trying to preserve the human race took this upon themselves too so uh, reading the text a bit more carefully you see that it wasn't as depraved uh, as people first thought it may have been it's still incest, it's still a sin of course but uh, uh, Lot and his daughters did what they probably thought was the right thing to do, uh, considering the limited knowledge that they had at the time. Uh, Leviticus 18.22 is during the law. Now again, uh, Genesis 19 is before the law. So before the law, homosexuality is condemned as being a sin. During the law, Leviticus 18.22, uh, homosexuality is called an abomination. Man with man, woman with woman. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. After law, we find in Romans 1.27, 1 Corinthians 6.9, 1 Timothy 1.10. Again, homosexuality, listed with a load of other sins as well, is condemned as being sinful. Uh, people say that Jesus Christ never condemned homosexuality. Well, uh, Matthew 15.19, he condemns fornication and adultery. And the term fornication is a general term in the Greek language, I'm told, to mean all forms of sexual uh, perversion, homosexuality, bestiality, and of course incest. Any sex that doesn't involve a married man uh, with a married woman uh, would be considered a sin. So please get your facts straight uh, before you uh, condone uh, of this lifestyle. If a man or woman uh, wants to come out of homosexuality, how dare you tell that person that uh, he has to remain in that lifestyle. If he wants to come out, if she wants to come out, uh, you should be assisting them to come out and be set free and uh, live a glorious life in Jesus Christ. Uh, I can remember a sermon a while ago by a well-known uh, pastor who was uh, recounting a story of a man who had been homosexual for years and this individual came out, was heterosexual and happily married and he told the uh, pastor about his wedding and the honeymoon and the pastor said to him, it must have been the happiest day of your life he said, no, I was miserable, so miserable and the pastor said, why was that? And he said, because I could remember all these sinful actions, all the men I'd been with. 
uh, before I was married. He was scarred, and uh, that scar will last forever. I can think of other people who have been saved out of lesbianism. And there's a, a ministry in America by a guy called Tony Horton, who uh, is determined to assist as many homosexuals as he can to be saved. So uh, please be careful you don't fall into a liberal church which condones of homosexuality and lesbianism. Uh, even the Church of England, as broad and as liberal as it is, still uh, is dying, still hasn't uh, managed to reverse its decline. People still don't join these dead, uh, ailing churches. People aren't stupid. People want to be saved. They want to know that there's hope uh, in the cross. Uh, people will also try and say that uh, that one is born with homosexuality. Well, I'll say a few things on that. First of all, uh, there was a member of the Kennedy family who uh, got himself in trouble some years ago. I can't remember all the details to it, but uh, he went before a judge and he said, "Well, you are not. I was born an alcoholic. Uh, alcoholism in, is in my family." And the judge said, "No, no, that won't do. You can't blame uh, your father and his father. You have chosen to be an alcoholic, and therefore the crime you've committed, you will be punished for." And uh, this. Uh, member of the Kennedy family was later sentenced. I also recall of a friend of the family who had a son uh, who was rather camp, shall we say, and he caught this early on and he was able to deal with that and uh, steer his son away from being camp. I can also recall of another occasion with another uh, individual who I know who had a, a very angry uh, son. This temper problem was evident from an early age and they took uh, the initiative to deal with this uh, anger and uh, they were able to resolve it and as the child has grown up he's still quite young now but uh, he's grown up his uh, temper has uh, receded so if you have people who are saying you know, from a young age my child was prone to homosexuality or lesbianism or uh, had a bad temper then you need to deal with that as a parent don't just leave your child and say, well, that's the way he or she is born. No, deal with it. Okay, there's enough people who go to prison for committing crime and uh, had their parents or their churches or their schools dealt with it at an earlier stage. It wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, it's also rather laughable that uh, Bibles are taken out of the schools and yet when you arrive in prison, you're given a Bible. Maybe if the Bible had been left in schools, you wouldn't have people going to prison, possibly, I don't know. But uh, it is a problem. It is an issue uh, within the body of Christ, and as I say, people who normally support homosexuality don't know their Bibles, and they don't read the Bibles uh, properly. They read selected passages, normally out of context, and they delude themselves, and more dangerously, they delude others too. And uh, homosexuality, along with lesbianism, stealing, lying, adultery, fornication, gluttony, uh, pride, so on and so forth, are sins which will send people to hell. Uh, Jesus Christ came to set people free so just think carefully uh, next time you are dealing with a liberal Christian who is an apostate who is uh, giving you only half the message in reality you are being shortchanged and uh, you need to get the full counsel of God you need to read the entire Bible in its entirety in context to see that the Lord uh, does not support homosexuality uh, man, woman and a child is a picture of the Trinity. Anything else would be an abomination to God. So just a quick video, day after Gay Pride March, and uh, blessings to you if you were in London yesterday doing some much worthy ministry. And if you are a homosexual or lesbian watching this video, uh, please know that we don't hate you. Uh, we're not out to uh, hurt you personally. And we certainly condemn anybody who would physically hurt you uh, or uh, seek to ridicule you. That's not something we support in this ministry. In the New Testament, the Bible is clear that uh, we would separate uh, from a homosexual or lesbian, but we would not uh, support anybody hurting you, whether through death in some Islamic countries uh, or through bullying or so on and so forth. It's not something which we would support, but we would also be honest enough to tell you that what you're doing is sinful and you need to repent, as uh, alcoholics have had to repent and uh, fornicators have had to repent and adulterers have had to repent and uh, you my dear friend would be no exception so just a quick video uh, day after gay pride 2009 thank you